All right. Hello, boys and girls. And uh, welcome. We are back uh, doing the month of Murphy. We finished Pandora Directive last night. And now we're doing Overseer. Well, I can't play Overseer because uh, it won't necessarily well, run on my computer anymore. It has compatibility issues. But we're doing a cinematic recap. We're just going to, you know, be for a couple hours watching the uh, Overseer cinematics. And then we are going to play Tesla Effect. And, you know, we're doing the Overseer cinematics because, uh, well, for now I want to. It's going to be remade, or mostly remade into, oh, uh, The Poison Pawn coming out this year. So uh, I'm pretty excited for that. This, it's pretty much why I'm doing The Month of Murphy. And just out of pure excitement for that. All right, so I guess without further ado, let's get things started. Hey, hey Akira. What's happening? On nowadays, Akira. I've had the shitty jobs. Oh, oh, that's not very good, uh. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that has to be terrible, just, you know, firing people just, you know, like that. Especially if they're, you know, people that, you know, you like and you know. Hey, Sukasuke. How are you doing tonight? Horus, yes, we beat the other game. And for a long while we were watching like the different endings that that game had. Pretty good. I'm uh, doing all right. I took like a two hour nap in the car after work. Tex? Are you okay? Sit up for a minute in the camera. No, I fall and I can't get up. Oh, come on, sweetie. Let me see that handsome face of yours. I'm not wearing it. I think it's in the laundry. Quit stalling. I want to see the real you. I look like one of those hideous mutants from beneath the planet of the apes. <sighs> hey, well, that's going to be nothing compared to what you're going to look like after I'm done with you if you show up late tonight. <sighs> oh, no. I'm not late again, am I? Curse this internal clock of mine. <sighs> you probably forgot, but our date starts in exactly 12 minutes. Lucky for you, there is a one-hour grace period. I'm sorry, Chelsea, but I've been working like a dog. Oh, has it been a hard day's night? Yeah, but I feel fine, and I want to be your man, so please, please love me, do. Okay, enough of that. Now get going before I change my mind about the surprise I have in store for us. I hope it's a naughty surprise. Oh, well, you'll just have to wait and see, cowboy. Now don't go back to sleep. 
Make yourself beautiful as quick as you can and zip on over here. I'll be waiting. What's I'm weird? Sorry, I'm late. Well, at least you're here. Come on in, let me take your hat and your coat. You know, in this light, you kind of look like a princess. Well, thank you. So which one of the dwarves do I have with me tonight? Happy, grumpy, or dopey? <sighs> Sleepy, actually. But hey, I'll tell you what. I put on a fresh shirt. I'm wearing the tie you asked me to wear. Get a couple of drinks for me. I'm gonna perk right up, okay? Well, you look like you've been working hard. Oh, man, I'm exhausted. It's just that I can't seem to get a oh, decent I see. night's sleep. You still having those nightmares? Or are we... Yeah, really? Huh. I don't know. Well, I think I... if you kept a little bit more normal hours and you ate a decent meal every now and again, you might look and feel a lot better. And that's why we have an 8 o'clock reservation at the Golden Pagoda. I'm not, like, monetizing any videos, so, uh... I don't know. Well... I just don't want to overtake my videos with, you like, you know, part one, part two, part three, part four, Maybe. part one, part two, part three, part four, you know? Early evening entertainment. Because if we... Text, honey. I don't know. It might not be a bad I, I idea. I don't want you to think that I'm not interested. I am. If it's just that I think but that we have But the only option Twitch has, like, splitting really it into 15-minute segments, I don't want to do that. Such as? I just think it would be nice if our relationship could go further. What, like, uh, all the way to second base? Oh. No. Especially if I'm playing for four hours. All I'm talking about is the ability to commit to something that has the potential to, to make us both very happy. It's about Sylvia, isn't it? No. And it's not about marriage. It's it's about that one thing that, that prevents us from being close. What does Sylvia have to do with you and me? You tell me. Okay. Really want to know? I'll tell you. But keep in mind, that six years ago, I was pretty much an idiot. The colonel had just fired me from his detective agency because I thought everything had to be done by the book, literally. Well, being the naive optimist that I was, I decided to go into business for myself and become a big success. As it turned out, I was about to learn some even harder lessons. I always loved that pink lighting. There I was in my shiny new office with all the trimmings up to my ears in debt. Weeks had gone by and I was still waiting around for my first client to show up. I figured I'd have more work than I could handle in a big city like New San Francisco. And I was just starting to feel like a tiny bug on a windshield. Well, five would be nice here. Uh, this is <laughs> the fifth game in the series. Well, actually, this is a remake of the very first game, which I have yet to play. I think once Poison Pond comes out, I'll play uh, Mean Streets. Are you the private investigator? Oh, man. Oh, that's what someone painted on the door. She was married to Jack Nicholson. I'll take that as a yes. Lucky broad. I'd like to hire you, if you're available. Well, it just so happens that I am. What can I do for you, Ms. Linsky? And then they made one more but game I after this. You me Sylvia. Which is what I'm going to be okay, playing Sylvia. after this. I'm Tex Murphy. Have a seat. I'm sorry if I disturbed your game. <sighs> well, I, yeah, that I one. was losing anyway. Would you like one? No, actually, there's a rumor going around that uh, those things are bad for you. Lots of things are bad for you. That doesn't stop me from enjoying them. So, uh, why are you in the market for a PI? My father, Carl Linsky, died a week ago. I'm sorry to hear that. The 
police think it's suicide. I believe they're wrong. Well, the police are usually pretty good in matters like this. I mean, I can't believe they'd make that big a mistake. My father wasn't suicidal, and I'll pay you to prove it. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, crap. name is... Sorry, what? Carl and welcome. Linsky. Okay. Well... If we rule out the suicide, that leaves three other ways to go. I mean, it could have been an accident or uh, natural causes. Still or it could have been murder. To make too. The police say that they have witnesses that saw him jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, I guess that rules out the first two then. So you think your father was murdered? He didn't kill himself. I know it. Yeah. I'm I'm ruining my body with Look, Dr. Pepper. If I Pepper take your case, you gotta understand McDonald's. there's no money back guarantee, and it doesn't sound real promising. I just don't know what else to do. Who's the officer in charge? The detective's name is Eve Clements. All right, I'll I'll go down and I'll talk to her. We can get together later, and I'll. Tell you what I found out. I'm staying at my father's house. Here's I know. Address. It's bad for me. Just now, destroying my about body. The money up front. How much do you need? Because I haven't got a lot. I'm running a special this week. If I decide not to take your case, there isn't going to be any charge. Mm. Thank you. I'll be waiting. It doesn't sound like a very promising start. Well, like I said, I was running out of cash fast and was pretty desperate for a case. I knew Detective Clements and figured I'd pay her a visit. The only problem was she and the Colonel were pretty tight, and like I told you, I'd gotten the Colonel in some trouble not long before. Get out! Well, Chris Jones, uh, the guy that plays Tex, he's, uh, he's the creator of the games. Plus a uh, designer, I believe. You busy? If it isn't Tex Murphy. Sold out any fellow PIs lately? Well, now that you bring it up, how is the Colonel doing anyway? We had a drink together a couple of nights ago. He said if I saw you, oh, to be that, sure no. and tell you to go to hell. You broke the law. You of all people should appreciate what I did. Officially speaking, you should have turned the Colonel in. Off the record, I wouldn't trust you to walk my dog. Well... Would you trust me to walk your cat? Sure. I hate cats. Almost as much as pansy PIs wasting my time. Look, I'll be so quick, you won't even know I was here. Give me one good reason and why I should do any favors for you. A lot of this game... Clements, even you were a rookie once. Give me a break. All right, Murphy. You're just lucky you caught me in a charitable mood. There's decision-making in this be game. Be quick about it. So this Six is like witnesses taking... saw Linsky okay. take the dive. Their stories matched now I up just and they all checked her... out. And they all ID'd Linsky. Uh, Not exactly. You know None how of them you were like close enough to make an absolutely positive and, uh, ID. But they described like his general appearance, games. build, and clothing. Uh, like, okay, ask about, person, ask about this person, ask Wasn't about this person, ask about this person. Wasn't in the best shape when we fished it out of the bay. That's what these segments are. We were are. able to make an identification using the personal effects found on the body. Standard stuff. Wallet. Keys, and a suicide note neatly sealed in a Ziploc bag. I'd let you see it, but it's logged in as evidence. The handwriting, incidentally, was a 100% match. As next of kin, she was notified and came in to identify her father's body. Didn't take it too well. 
One of the uniforms had a driver home. Coroner said the cause of death was drowning. No other injuries. Though there was a scar back here. Linsky probably had surgery done recently. That's all. We didn't follow it up since it had nothing to do with his suicide. So you're saying you're not going to take my case? Well, I don't want to take your money if I can't help you. Fine. Leave. I'm just being straight up, okay? If you won't help me, I can do what I can on my own. It certainly won't be the first time. I charge $400 a day plus expenses. I have $1,000. If you can prove it wasn't suicide, I'll give you $10,000 later. It's a deal. Now you're gonna need to tell me everything you know so I can get started. Oh, I will. Thank you, Tex. All I want to do is find out the truth about my father's death. Detective Clement said you didn't pick up your father's personal effects. I really don't remember much after they asked me to identify the body. An officer drove me home and I haven't gone back. Well, they won't release the personal effects to me, and I'm hoping I'll be able to go through them so I can see if there's any kind of lead. When we're done, I'll go pick them up and meet you back here. She wasn't very friendly or helpful. I think she already made up her mind about my father's death. Why don't you think your father would commit the, suicide? Uh, Clements. He never would have considered it. He took good care of himself, and he often told me he was going to celebrate his 100th birthday by going skydiving. Well, do you know anybody who'd want to see him dead? No. No one. Everyone liked him. He was a kind man. I found a scrap of paper here with the address to your office written on it, no name. If my father didn't contact you, he must have gone to see someone else who works in your building. Before I came to see you, I checked the directory in the lobby, but didn't recognize any of the names. Hmm. And, okay, in the game, he finds an address. Yes, indeedy. Uh, My name's for... Tex Murphy. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking into the death of Carl Linsky. Oh, well, or Carl Linsky's girlfriend in. at the time. Thank you. This person. You are very, very welcome. Well, this is certainly exciting. A, a real live P.I. <laughs> I love detective novels, you know. Right. I guess I've always had a certain fascination with private dicks. Well, I'm afraid that real P.I.s like myself uh, were nothing like the ones in the novel. We're actually very, very boring. I don't <laughs> believe that for a second. I'll bet if you found the right partner to do some undercover work with, you would liven right up. I can imagine, although I'm <clears throat> trying not to. <laughs> Tell me what I can do for you. Anything at all? Well... I can see you're still pretty shaken up about your boyfriend. Maybe this isn't the best time to be asking you questions. What if I refuse to cooperate? Will you interrogate me under a bare bulb? Well, maybe later, uh, if you played your cards right. Right now, uh, we need to get back to Carl. Well, all right. Where to begin? Where to begin? It was about three months, 11 days ago on a foggy, foggy night when Carl and I first met. It just began with a dark Naturally, and stormy night. it was night. love at first sight. Interesting. Had you and Carl been drinking heavily that night? <laughs> Actually, Carl came to have me draw up his will. That's what I do for a living. Well, be a sweetie and tell me who's mentioned in the will. Just for you. The primary beneficiary was that trollop, Sylvia. You know, just between us, I believe Sylvia may have driven Carl to his death. 
You mean like, uh, dropped him off at the bridge? <sighs> well, not literally. You don't think Carl was murdered, do you? Let's just say the police didn't find any trace of banana peel up there on that bridge. Now I've got a few more questions for you, if you don't mind. Oh. Uh, hey, Jung. I'd do anything to help. I think you know that. I loved Carl desperately. We were very happy together. I can't for the life of things. me imagine why... He did what he did. Carl's wife left soon after Sylvia was born. Ah, uh, these are all oh, cutscenes. Carl did the best that he could, but he never felt that he'd done a very good job raising Sylvia. And she never appreciated her father. She left home when she was very young and went into some unsavory kind of work, escorting or something like that. Carl's heart was nearly broken. They hadn't been close in years. I'm afraid Carl's estate consisted of his home and his speeder well, and not much more. This is a game. I'm afraid Carl wasn't very good with money. But... He stipulated in his will that everything be divided between his daughter Sylvia and the North Hill Clinic. But we of aren't course, doing the, the gameplay parts. That this game Carl doesn't Sylvia really... will get will be from his life insurance policy. It's always with the trollop. That was Carl's way of making amends to Sylvia. And I'm sure it's the only reason Sylvia has you investigating her father's death. Carl worked there for years. It's a very so exclusive medical, medical facility, you know. I've been in touch with the director, Arnold Sternwood. He's an extremely attractive man. But also very busy. If you'd like to see him, I can try to arrange an appointment with him. I'll call you and let you know. Then you'll have to owe me a favor. Ooh. Yeah, uh, this game oh. won't run on my computer I'm still well. I'm shock, as you must imagine. So we're just doing It'll the cutscenes. We're just going weeks, on YouTube doing the cutscenes. Maybe months before I'm able to love again. <sighs> and we're doing that for like eh, maybe a couple hours, and then. Uh, uh, then I will police. be playing Tesla Effect. There wasn't much. The next game in the series. His wallet, a set of keys, two go to the house, one to the speeder. The other two, I don't know what they go to. Okay, grab. They also gave me a copy of the suicide note. I'll check them out. Uh, I've got a few things I need to run by you. I went out and I talked with Dolores Lightbody today. Apparently you two aren't exactly soul sisters. She is hideous. I don't know what kind of black magic she used on my father, but I can't think of any other explanation. Loris told me about the will. Apparently you're the beneficiary. Why are you treating me like I'm a suspect? For your information, if I sold the house and the speeder and added it to the cash, I might be able to pay off my father's debt. I'm not going to benefit from this will. Except, of course, the million-dollar life insurance policy. I'm not going to get a cent of that. I'm surprised you're even asking me about that. You know, life insurance policies don't pay off in cases of suicide. And that's why you retain my services. Well, you can think that if you want. But I don't have to stick around here and be insulted by the hired help. Oh. Ouch. Damn. Yeah. I violated PI Rule 17. Never upset a client. She was right. I was the hired help, so I went back to work. The manila envelope Sylvie had given me turned out to have some pretty useful items in it. Oh, wow, that green screen. Linsky's secret workshop was out by the spaceport in an old warehouse. The key from the manila envelope fit the lock, and I stepped inside. Was anyone there? No, and I doubt anyone had been there since Linsky. The place didn't appear to have been searched, judging by all the interesting things I found. I forget what I found in that uh, warehouse. I knew you'd be back. I just never Shoot dreamed it. it would be so <laughs> It doesn't soon. even say. Well, the last time I was here, you were a big help. And I do mean that literally. I'll do anything to help. Anything. I seem to remember Carl mentioning somebody with those initials. Although... It was... It was Sunny. Oh. Sunny something rather. Sunny... Fletcher. Found a yes, sticky I'm note with uh, that it was Sunny Fletcher. 
SF on it, I, I remember. I think he was a P.I., like you. Although I doubt he was as handsome. I don't know what he was doing for Carl. <laughs> it's too soon, Tex. Allow me to... to grieve first, and... then we'll see what grows between us. Ugh. <sighs> Hi, Tex. I need to talk to you as soon as possible. Could you come over to my father's house whenever you get this message? No matter how late it is, I'll be waiting for you. Ah, the mating call of the blonde bird of prey. Well, I guess it goes without saying you ran right over there. If I'd known how dangerous the situation was, I would have stopped by a gun. Turned out Sylvia had been talking to Mr. Absolute all evening. Hmm. from hell. <laughs> I bet you've solved this damn mystery by now, haven't you? <laughs> oh, thank you, man. Mm-hmm. And here I am. Sylvia Linsky, the bereaved client whose daddy took a dive into the San Francisco Bay. <laughs> it sounds interesting, doesn't it? <laughs> sounds like you've had too much to drink. Oh, don't tell me I've had too much to drink. I have plenty to drink about, more than you know. That's just the grief time. <laughs> what do you know about grief? Huh? Is your daddy dead? Did your mom walk out on you before you could even pronounce your own name? Huh? <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> you know. What it's like to be absolutely alone? That's what I am now, alone. I, I don't have anybody now. Sylvia, I'm really sorry. Don't, don't, don't pity me. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. Go away. What you don't need is any more of this. What you do need is some Betty Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Murphy, I'm surprised at you taking advantage of a woman who's had too much to drink. <laughs> Not tonight, Sylvia. I require my victims to be at least sober enough to sign a waiver. <laughs> you passed that point a long time ago. Wow. Mm, don't you like me, Tex? I like you. That's why I put you to bed. Now I'm gonna leave. You know, fine. Not one bit. I'm doing pretty good. Good night, Sylvia. Good night. I like you too, Tex. You're not gonna like anything in the morning. <laughs> You know, when we first same met, same it wasn't all that different complain. from your night with Sylvia. But of course, you were the one that was sloppy drunk. What? You're talking about the Bastille Day celebration at the Bruin Stew? Oh, I wasn't that drunk. Oh, no. We, we met before Louis' party. Don't you remember? Come on, sweetie. Oh, I do remember something, but I thought that was a dream. It's all kind of fuzzy. Okay, buddy. Come on. Mm. Time to go Louis. home. No. Louie, one more. Hey, hey let's get uh -huh. going, bud. Come on. Morning. You've got places to go. I've got... Oh, come on, guy. Get out of here. Look at what you've done to my stand. I can get those. No, I don't need your help. I need help. to do with that. Get 
Promising story. Yeah. Now I know why I don't remember. You punched me. I mean, my jaw hurt for a week and I never did figure out why. Mm -hmm. Well, I was kind of a down period in my life. It's more along the well, same lines. Things have gotten better. Haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I'm longing to find out anyway. how you went from the starch pressed young PI to a puddle of drool. Let's hear some more about your story. Well, you're making it sound so glamorous. What did you do after you left Sylvia? Well, the next morning, Dolores Lightbody contacted me. She had got an appointment with Arnold Sternwood out at the North Hill Clinic. And I went out to see him. If anything, uh... Yeah, I would just call it a point-and-click adventure with, uh... Uh, live action long, almost in, I have uh, an extremely full docket. Yeah, live action full well, video. I suppose just this one time we can forego the background check and hobby questionnaire. So, what can I do for you? Well, I've always been fascinated by any kind of medical facility. Could you tell me about North Hill? We offer every type of quality health care and are rated among the ten best hospitals in the world. Um, I don't want you to take this wrong. But do you think that any of the work that Carl Linsky was doing here at North Hill could have contributed in any way to his untimely death? I understand you're investigating all avenues, but I don't think Carl's work is relevant. Confidentially, I'd try to determine whether Carl's daughter had something to do with his suicide. Whatever you do, don't let her get her hooks into you. Oh, we're not going to get anywhere if you insist on being so subtle. Are you saying I should keep one eye on my client? A word of caution. I would keep both eyes on and both hands off Miss Linsky. Now, I don't mean to be unaccommodating, Mr. Murphy, but I really do have urgent matters to attend to. Look, sorry, can I just have a couple of minutes? Carl worked here for 26 years. Over the past few years, his age forced him to give up surgery in favor of research. We were friends, though not extremely close. I was sorry to learn of his premature death. Carl gave me no indication of being suicidal. Of course, I hadn't seen him in over two months. Miss Peck works for Capricorn. While I respect oh. her professionalism and the ideas of the organization for which she works, I don't look back on our brief association with any fondness. Also finds a name for Wanda Peck. About a year right. ago, Capricorn came to us to Carl Linsky specifically, with allegations of unethical research practices. The charges were completely without merit. But Carl decided to take a voluntary leave of absence, and Capricorn decided to not pursue the investigation. Spoto appears to have been taken recently. The other man is John Klaus. John Klaus worked here before I became director. Found that photo. He was the top surgeon and left photo. North Hill for a distinguished position at San Francisco General. Probably in the warehouse. I believe he may have performed Carl Linsky's surgery. I know Carl had surgery some time ago. I believe he had a benign brain tumor. The surgery was not performed in North Hill. Oh, and right. I have no further details for you. The surgery in the brain tumor. Sylvia so Linsky uh, came by to pick up a father's personal effects. Big part of this game, too. Must be nice having a job. For a change. Yeah, it's nice. But I'm going to have lots of clients. I bet they're practically going to be knocking down my door. Yeah, right. It's probably your landlord looking for back rent. Yeah. You're kidding about that. You know, Lieutenant, I mean, we could sit here all day and trade friendly insults. That might be pretty fun. But you know what I need right now? I need the help of an intelligent, knowledgeable, not to mention gorgeous policewoman right now. You're not as charming as you think, Murphy. What do you want? Older guy. He's a PI like you. Uh, or Hunter. used to be. He has a little problem with the bottle. Okay, look. Fletcher's had a few DUIs. He's a friend of the colonel's, and as a favor, we didn't make him do any time. 
If you can keep that to yourself, I'll call Fletcher's parole officer and let you know where you can find Sonny. It gets a little cold in here. Need the beanie sometimes. Hey, quality humor. What do you want? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm on a scavenger hunt. I'm looking for a spool of thread, a shoehorn, and the answer to a question. Why did Carl Linsky throw himself off the Golden Gate Bridge? Hmm. What makes you think I know Carl Linsky? That's up to you, Sonny. I mean, I can invite Linsky's girlfriend and your parole officer over for a game of truth or dare. You can just humor me right now. Let me tell you something. With that attitude of yours, I can tell that you just received your PI license, didn't you? I like to say, brother, it takes one to know one. My name's Murphy. All right. <laughs> Come in, Murphy. I'll talk to you. Casa es tu casa. Thanks. Close the door. Nice place. Yeah. My travel agent got it for me. I'd get a new travel agent. Get travel <laughs> agents in the future? Is this your permanent residence? It just might be, why? That's just... It's like you're hiding out from bill collectors or something. Mmm, I guess you could say that. Come on! What do you want from me, huh? I understand Carl Linsky had hired you. At least, before he died. I had nothing to do with Carl Linsky buying the farm. Bible truth. Mm. The Bible says the truth will set you free. Oh. What were you working on with Linsky? Uh, okay, I guess I can tell you now, it doesn't matter. He wanted me to find some people for him. Why? I don't know. Man gives me a list of names and I go to work, okay? If you don't mind me saying, why would Litsky hire you? You don't look like you're in much condition to be working. <laughs> That's low. I haven't had a drink in almost two years! Until last week! I guess you're pretty thirsty by then. You're funny, man! You're so funny. I just tracked down two people, all right? It was a Val Davis and a Rona Morgan. Didn't take me any time. I found out where they were. They were in the ground, and they hadn't been there too long. So when you dropped the case? Yeah, around there. Look, I... Uh, I prefer not to talk about this anymore, okay? Okay. Gracias. If you could just give me some more information about the names on the list. I can't remember! Come on, don't hold out on me. You want a bribe or something? You know that's illegal. I can't remember! Bible's truth! Mm. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I'm working on Linsky's suicide, and I just need some information, a clue or a lead, something to keep the thing going. Wait a minute. All right. Tell me to hang on to it, the bees up, in case anything happened to him. Just a bishop. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Just a warning. You better get off this case right now. Judgment Day is looking for me, and it could look for you, too. You better get out, amigo. I'll keep your warning in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is made in 1998. Or 7. Around then. I think we'll see each other around. Yeah, maybe. 
Hey. I'll shut the door. There were a lot of uh, FMV I dealt with games Capricorn in one of back in those days. Cases, but this was the first time in the Capricorn building. I mean, the exterior was impressive, but what I saw inside was dynamite. Well, the in-game graphics weren't as up to par as, like, you know, all the live-action stuff. But I still had a lot of fun with it back in the day. Back in the day. My god. Want to pack? I turned 30 in a couple you, months. Murphy. And I'm saying stuff like, back in the day. Well, for starters, why don't you and I get married? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm oh, here yeah. to my work. I'll take your proposal as a compliment. I'll pick up a job application on my way out. Sorry, I'm just not hiring. You sure you don't want to tie the knot? I'm housebroken and everything. Yeah, it's quite an offer, but I think I'll pass. What can I do for you? I'm a PI. I've been hired to look into the apparent suicide of a man named Carl Linsky. Your name was in his notes. I read about Linsky's death. I was sad about it. But why do you want to talk to me? Take a seat. Frankly, leads in this case have been harder to find than a good Polly Shore movie. I get the feeling you're not convinced that Linsky's death was a suicide. If that's the case, I would be happy to help you in your investigation. I remember About a this year ago, woman has we were told that Mr. Linsky real was conducting uh, unethical practices <laughs> on comatose and terminally ill patients at North Hill Clinic. I looked into the matter, but was unable to prove anything. Mr. Linsky voluntarily took a leave of absence, saying he had other projects to pursue, so we decided to drop the investigation. Carl Linsky and John Klaus together. This is extremely interesting. Do you mind if I have this photo examined? I'd like to find out exactly when and where it was taken. I'll let you know if I find anything out, okay? Klaus is a scary man. He has a lot of pull in the Law and Order Party. I think he'd run for office if he could, but he doesn't have the image for it. Instead, he sits behind the curtain and pulls the strings. We're putting a lot of our resources into investigating Law and Order. Their legal people make sure they don't cross the line publicly, but their ideology is pretty frightening to anyone with any intelligence or belief in human rights. Yeah, well, I tried running this on Voodoo. Didn't... Uh, run as well. All oh, right, and he's going to the Anasazi ruins. This is like one of the weakest parts in the game. Or just the weakest looking part. I'm pretty sure this was like, you know, near the end of the game where they were running out of budget. It doesn't really show the gameplay, but... <laughs> it's just... I haven't seen Indiana Jones in a while. Any of them. And did I say 38 years old? No, I, I'm turning 30.
Oh wow, oh. As I entered Clark's lab, something caught my eye. What was it? It was blood. It was all over the floor. Probably walked into the middle of a murder scene, and the question was, where was Bosworth Clark? Oh, Big Jim Slade. Bosworth. Oh, yes, yes. Bosworth Clark. Yes. What? What is this? We're going to play a little game. <laughs> One in six chances. One more time. No, don't. <laughs> yeah, they. I, I noticed the paper thin brick wall. <laughs> I thought I'd stop by and see whether you'd finished your examination on hey, that photograph of Linsky. We did, but we only found one thing of any interest. Both Klaus and Linsky were wearing ID badges with the STG logo on them. Does that mean anything to you? No, not yet. Hey, next month we you get Undertale. you got a couple of minutes, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Mario. Sure. Uh, I've heard only one Zelda. reference to STG. It was in a letter sent to me anonymously about Near a month Automata. ago. The letter was sent by someone calling him or herself the Poisoned Pawn. I would have figured it was written by some psychopath, but there was enough verifiable information to make me take it seriously. The letter said that there was a project called STG, which was in the process of being swallowed up by law and order. The letter advised us to check out John Klaus, STG, and law and order's connection to it. I have no idea who it is. We examined the letter for clues to the author's mean? identity, but came she up just dry. Tilt your head. He or she a did lot. say that we could contact them through someone named Jorge Valdez. There are a handful of Jorge Valdezes in the area, and I'm sure there are some that aren't listed. I've checked out the ones I could find, but none of them appeared to be the one I was looking for. Gideon Enterprises had a little shakeup recently. The chairman of the board, Frank Schimming, pulled a coup on Jay St. Gideon, who's now practically out of a job. It was all legal, but underhanded. Rumors have circulated that Schimming is connected to the Law and Order Party. <coughs> if that's the case, we're going to have a hard time doing anything to stop them. Gideon Enterprises has more money and power than it knows what to do with. They would make an imposing enemy. Gideon helped us design some of our most valuable and top secret surveillance equipment. We even invited him to join our organization, but he said that he was too old for the cloak and dagger business. Yes? Mr. Shimming, my name's Murphy, and I'm looking into the apparent suicide of one of your employees. Is this an official investigation? Uh, if you're a nice guy and play ball with me, I think we can keep this thing off the record. I believe it's within my rights to ask for whom you work. I don't work for anybody. I'm working with Wanda Peck. So, you're with Capricorn. Yeah, Pandora Directive is a murky game. I thought you people had gotten game. tired of pestering me. All the games I've been playing we this never month get are tired of games. pestering. That's our motto. <laughs> what is it you want this time? We are the world's foremost innovator and implementer of security surveillance systems. We are also the parent company for dozens of smaller firms, ranging from computer chip makers right. to research facilities. We have many small subsidiary companies. If I remember correctly, STG was research-based and probably more of a write-off than anything. I know it is no longer in existence and was unimportant, to say the least. 
I respect the work Capricorn does, he's which is the, the only reason I'm talking to you now. He's part of the law. To my knowledge, Gideon which Enterprises has done nothing to warrant a Capricorn investigation. Ms. Peck has approached me with insinuations of illegal ties between Gideon Enterprises and the Law and Order Party. I know Capricorn feels a responsibility to investigate scenarios of this type, month. but Miss Peck's suspicions are completely unfounded. Mr. Gideon founded this corporation and brought it to prominence, and he did this despite mediocre business skills, which have diminished along with his general mental state over the past several years. He became obsessed with pet projects and was leading the company in a counterproductive direction. And for that reason, the board of directors saw fit to limit his authority in business matters. So what does Mr. Wow. Gideon think about all of this? Why don't you ask him yourself? I'm sure he'd appreciate a visit from someone other than nurses and wheelchair repairmen. I'll let you know where to find him. Oh, hell yeah. All right, we get to one of my favorite scenes in the game right here. That and the ending with him. I think you'll uh, recognize this guy. you've got here you must find it ostentatious I bet I do as well it's certainly too much home for only one person you don't live here alone do you I'm afraid so my fortune has provided me with a fully automated self-sufficient existence I suppose my disability has given me an aversion to reliance on others I need to play 11th hour I want for nothing but I've played Seventh Guest. Except perhaps human companionship. That was one of the very first games I had on the PC. Somewhat forced semi retirement. Well, don't you worry about your safety. I mean, given your condition. <laughs> Gideon Enterprises defines state of the art with regard to security systems. <laughs> I am surrounded, uh, perhaps imprisoned by the very finest electronic moat. No, I don't worry about my safety, though I thank you for your concern. Now, to what do I owe this welcome visit? Surprisingly like thick for a strategy guide. Carl Linsky. He was an employee in your corporation. Oh no, no, Gideon Enterprises is no longer mine, I'm afraid. I'm sure that Frank Shimming would be a better source of information than I. I already talked with Frank Shimming. He was about as helpful as a DMV employee in the middle of his two-week notice. It's <laughs> still in good condition. That doesn't surprise me. I won't mince words. I don't like Shimming. My complete trust uh, in him was repaid with his exploiting my lack of management acumen. Then, for this usurping game? my position no. as head of Gideon. No, you don't. You don't need to play You're the other section of the corporation. <laughs> yes, yes. I have no more real authority to run my company than the King of England has to run his country. I'm merely a figurehead, nothing more. So why don't you just sack him, as the English say? <laughs> Even if I could, what would be the point, huh? My time is past. I'm as outdated as this. Antique. Such is the cutthroat nature of business. Though I dare say the world itself has become nothing more than a business run by a select few. I'm not sure I agree, Mr. Gideon. I think there are a lot of people out there who want to make the world a better place. Oh? 
And you, my fine friend, how do you intend to make the world a better place? I don't know. Keep an open mind. No, it wasn't the facelift. Buy Girl Scout cookies. He has a condition. I think this will Especially with his make eyes. A difference? I think if enough people care, it just might catch on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I used to think like you at one time. But That's why you don't see him around cost lately. Nothing, and I lived on it for many years. But its taste is bittersweet. It's in large part the reason why I can no longer walk. You'd like to hear what happened, wouldn't you? I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Oh, I've been in this damn cage for more years than I care to remember. I've had to grow accustomed to it. It was 2013. I forgot what it's called, but yeah. I was in Geneva to attend a covert meeting of UN operatives. There were 14 of us, and at least one was a traitor. Armed with an explosive device. Quality. You ever see Austin Powers? I was the only survivor. Did you ever find out who it was? Or the 1960s no. uh, Romeo and Juliet? It could have been any one of a score of countries or, or organizations. Well, I don't suppose it matters anymore. It was the beginning of the end. Oh, you gotta see Austin Powers, the first one. There are no heroes anymore. Only villains of varying degrees. The other two are good, but yeah. What about Capricorn? You support what they do, don't you? Oh, Capricorn does what they do, but they're merely fighting the good fight. Oh, greed and corruption have the upper hand. When I was younger, I sincerely believed we could achieve a semblance of global order and harmony. That was only the foolish dream of a youthful idealist. <laughs> Once I was crippled, I was no longer of use. No, no, I was turned loose into the world. A cruel and deadly steeplechase where survival was a matter of social Darwinism. I was... I was lost. I believed that my handicap had denied me my destiny. Years and years passed before I realized that I still had much to offer. With little more than a plan, I laid the foundations of Gideon Enterprises. Among the mutant population, I found other social misfits whose skills and talents had been overshadowed by their physical abnormalities. <laughs> oh, those were difficult times. We were openly ridiculed. Finding investors and financing was an often humiliating series of rejections. How could someone like myself, a cripple, ever hope to accomplish such a venture? But eventually, we did succeed becoming the wealthiest and most powerful corporation of its type in the world. I had recaptured the idealism of my youth, the belief that through sacrifice, commitment, and hard work, anything was possible. But then, Then it happened again. In the blink of an eye, all those years of investment and careful nurturing were torn from me by thieves and liars masquerading as board members and stockholders. And now, towering over them all is Frank Shimming. His disregard for integrity is matched only by his worship of dividends and profit margins. So, so nothing has happened. I have come full circle. And once again, I'm unwanted, unneeded, and facing a purposeless existence. So. So you listen to me. 
If you insist in striding through life, arms laden with hope, you will only meet with one devastating disappointment after another. Oh, oh please, please forgive me, Mr. Murphy. You must be, you must be a very busy man. I must, I must apologize for monopolizing your time with my ramblings. I don't mind. Oh, it's, it's good of you to indulge me. Just that I receive so few visitors these days. But we, we must return to your investigation. Please, tell me what I can do to assist you. Ah, chess is my only diversion. Oh, if you care to play, I'd be glad to teach you a thing or two about the game. Yeah. In chess terminology, a poisoned pawn is the bait in a trap. Whoever is going by that name probably considers him or herself a sacrificial lamb, so to speak. Mr. Valdez runs a chess shop called the Rank and File in the Old City. We play quite often over the Ethernet. Yes, he's one of the few worthy opponents I've found. A chess shop? I'm gonna go to one of those. I mean, nowadays you just find, like, uncle's games. How's the game going? Welcome to the rank and file. What can I do Solitaire is my stupid diversion. Well, one of the pawns from my chess set is very, very sick. I think he may have been poisoned. Anything you can do to help? What kind of chess set do you have? <laughs> okay. Okay, you got me bluffing. I don't actually own a chess set, but I am looking for a man named Valdez. That's my name. Though I'm sure there are one or two others in the world. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private investigator. Look, I don't want any trouble. I'm a friend of J. St. Gideon's. Oh, if you're a friend of Mr. Gideon's, you're a friend of mine. But yeah, how can I help you? Waiting for that. Uh, Mr. Gideon's, Gideon's been a friend of the mutants for years. It's like one of my favorite. I like most people in the gaming. social strata. He's a great man. It makes me angry as hell to think what Shimmy did to him. I don't know anything about the letter, or I why like my chess. name was mentioned in it. I like playing chess. Poison I'm not the best at it, is a but... chess term. I love, I love a good to game an of chess. apparently unprotected pawn whose capture leads to dire consequences. If I had to guess, I'd say the author of the anonymous letter felt like he was the first link in a dark chain. <laughs> I like this actor. <laughs> you know what the Law and Order Party is? It's the Fourth Reich. They won't rest until every mutant is deported, imprisoned, or dead. <laughs> but what's up, Mega? Dex Murphy here. Are you investigating the death of Carl Linsky? Hey, it's Ron Howard's brother. It depends. Who's asking? A friend. J just a friend. <sighs> You're not calling to see whether I need my carpets cleaned, are you? No. So what do you need? The question is, what do you need? Well, good home-cooked meal would be nice, but other than that, I need a lead. A University of San Francisco professor, Val Davis, died in a speeder crash last week. Well, that's interesting, but it's not much of a lead, is it? Davis was working on the STG project with Linsky. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now you've got my attention. There are answers to be found in Davis's laboratory on the USF campus Building C. If you get there within the hour, the doors will be unlocked. Okay, I'm on my way, but what am I looking for? The chess move. I'll be watching. When you find it, I'll contact you again. I just noticed that. 
It's probably because of, like the low quality video. That's what it really looks like. But oh my god, that's so charming. Oh. Oh, that's hey, no, that's worse no. than the movie Buddy. Oh. Hey, monkey. Monkey, do you know what I have in my pocket, huh? How does that look to you, huh? You know what this is? You do, don't you? You want one, don't you? That's it. Go ahead. That's good. That's good. Hey. No. Monkey. Look what I got for you. Huh? Oh, nice, huh? right. You want a banana, huh? Here you go. That's it, that's it. Go on, monkey. Good. It's good, isn't it? That's it. That's good, that's good. Good, good, good. Good. <laughs> good. Oh, is the monkey tired? Oh, look at the oh. poor dog. I think you find like both the bananas and the drugs in Orlinsky's house. Hombre! Hey, adelante! <laughs> Compadre! I didn't expect to see you looking so good. Murphy, oh. I've come face to face with my demon. Slate. What happened? In the depths of my despair, I had a vision. A vision of redemption. I realized I couldn't pass on without confronting what I feared most of life. Slade. I tracked him to his lodge. I broke in. <laughs> I'm still a good detective. So was Slade there? No. Not at first. So what happened? I had to take something from him. Something important. Nothing could replace Maria. I found something, Murphy. I know it's important because it was hidden. Here. God, you are hurt. I've got to get you to the hospital. No, there's no need. I've had my last drink, I mean. Maybe not. Maybe there's time for one more. this whole chess conversation going on. I should play more. Salud. No. Actually, I'm curious. Or one for yourself. I, I guess Game Master and... Uh, I'm not really a I am. Oh, International and Grandmaster, Rose okay. Time.
You're breathing. Salute, hombre. Because you're wearing a dark shirt, At I At least he was able it. to die in peace. I didn't know it was going to be such a sad story. Otherwise, he he had a damn good acting job. Who killed Sonny? Was it Slade? <laughs> Must have been. I never did find out for sure. Oh, yep. And now he is in Big Slade's Lodge. Oh, this was fun. Going around his house while he's in the shower. Slade here. And I, like, have to quick be quick and hide in yeah. the closet. Took her a number six. One of my lucky numbers. Enjoyed that one. No problem. Pick up orders at the same drop point. No, I haven't noticed. Make something to eat first. I should check that out. I want to watch that again. There's been a slight problem with that. An old acquaintance of mine decided to make some trouble for me. Tex Murphy, he's just Don't a worry. PI. I know how to find him. It'll just be a slight delay. And this time I won't let him get away. Uh, Khan? No, I, I think said, I... said, don't worry. After pre- <laughs> God damn Now it, that I knew the location of the drop point, I drove like a maniac to the Mill Valley Post Office. I kept my eyes peeled, but either Slade hadn't used this place I... as a drop point before, I'm or he was sure elsewhere looking for something to kill. I'm so sorry, I got so wrapped up in your story that I completely lost track of time. Well, I've been told I have that effect on women. Some sort of hypnotic power. Whatever you say, sweetie. I, but seriously, you know, we really have to hurry. It's not easy getting reservations at the Golden Pagoda. Well, as you know, I take the driving laws very seriously, so excessive speed is really out of the question. <laughs> However, no shortcut. This isn't the way home. Where are you taking me? found out some information just before I picked you up for dinner. Did you fall madly in love with me? I have reason to believe you're in the same danger your father was. Why? Well, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm checking into it. Regardless, I'm really nervous about your safety, and I think you ought to stay at the warehouse where your father was working. That place is boring. That doesn't mean nothing will. Besides, it reflects very poorly on me if my clients get bumped off during a case. Plus, I couldn't pay you if I were dead, huh? Now, that's a very good point. You're such a tough guy. Okay. I'll lay low for a few days if you want me to. But only because I don't want you to worry. <laughs> Ah, there's one. Hydrant. Oh, man. There's one. Handicapped. Actually, I think you can make a case for that one. Oh, that is very funny. <laughs> ah, right there, right in front of the restaurant. Okay. Told you. Sylvia back to the warehouse, I decided to go over the law and order party. Well, it was after midnight, so I figured nobody would be around <laughs> the place. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Excuse me, sir, but this premises has been secured for the evening. 
I'm gonna have to ask you to leave immediately. Oh yeah, right. I work for Robert Knott, okay? And unless you want to become a permanent addition to the concrete foundation of a new high-rise, I suggest you let me go about my business. I don't care if you work for the NSA. I'm going to need to see some ID. Okay, pal, listen up, because I'm only going to say this once. I've been hired by the Law and Order Party to do a few jobs, so I don't need ID. So you just back up and nobody's going to get hurt. Look, mister, I'm not looking for any trouble. But I want to hold on to my job. Look, mister, I'm not looking for any trouble. I won't call you in. <laughs> but I need to log in the ID number off the access badge you used to get in here. Well, it's your butt. The name is Slade. Jim Slade. It'll just be a second, Mr. Slade. Have a cup of joe, there's plenty. What the hell are you doing? Uh, oh, contact problem. Got it on again, though. <sighs> Oh, and this is after he leaves, right? It's in the future. You can have, like, you know... I guess it could be a wireless plug. Shut up, Mega. You're ruining the whole game. <laughs> oh, yeah, and... Sorry, I kind of... You know... Left in the middle without saying goodbye. I had like three hours of sleep the night before, and I needed that bed. Holy crap. No, no Dumb and Dumber scene coming up. A bit lazier. Oh, well, look, now he's asleep on the job. What is this? <gasps> oh, right. This is... Uh, this is that scene. He finds an address to this uh, other warehouse. For this pier front. And maybe the coffee wasn't that piping hot. Maybe it had made, uh, been made like earlier in the day. Oh. 
Oh, hey, experimenter. When I finally regained consciousness, it felt like I'd been trying to drink my own body weight and cheap gin. It sounds it's terrible. But, yeah, you're... Oh, Rand over two. Thank you gotta you. sleep, Is yeah. You know, I think I'll keep it, thank you. Okay. Um, is it less than yeah. three hours? Oh, that's all right. That wasn't the worst of it, did you? I had this ripping pain inside my head. I mean, I was munching ibuprofen tablets like they were Reese's Pieces. That didn't stop the blinding light I was getting behind my eyes or the pain I had in my head. Did you see a doctor? No, just the light flashes, actually. Come, I'll take you to your seat. Oh, uh, thank you. Here are your seats. We'll have to prepare another table for you since you were late this evening. Can I get your drink? Uh, well, well, I, I don't think so. Why don't we just wait? Certainly. Hmm. That way you can tell me more of the story. Oh, this must be the penalty box. So, you finished telling me about Linsky. Okay. Well, the thought occurred to me that Carl Linsky might have gone through the same thing I was going through. I mean, you remember I told you he had that little scar mm -hmm. on the back of his neck? It wasn't so hard for me to envision jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge just to get away from the pain. What had they done to you? Well, I had no idea. Then I got beat up really good. I didn't realize at the time the clock was ticking that I had less than 48 hours to live. What did you do? Well, I was only halfway up a long series of steps. The next one was to find Robert Knott because he and I were on the same sinking ship together. It was so important that you wanted to meet me after hours. I've got something that might interest even you. I'm listening. This disc is from Robert Knott's office. How'd you get that? Uh, off the record, I stole it. Robert Knott's fallen out of favor with the Law and Order Party. And for all I know, he could be dead. But if he's alive, I want to know where he is. It's a pretty short so game, otherwise. Record, Quality I know humor. Robert personally. We're in the middle of this I story, like so. I don't know where he is, but I can give you the best guess I have. He owns a cabin up north, which no one knows about. Well, almost no one. I'll give you directions. Wait here. I remember beating this game in a day. Well, I wasn't expecting any company, but as long as you're here... What the hell's going on here? Whoa! Listen, don't shoot the messenger, okay? I came to warn you. Somebody wants you dead. Tell yeah. me something I don't know. Okay. Did you know that uh, this place was also fries DVD. and dipping sauce has three days worth of fat and cholesterol? Oh, well, that's just fascinating. And I'm running out of patience. Okay. I don't know who it is, but somebody inside Law & Order hired a hitman named Big Jim Slade. You're on his things-to-do list. Keep talking. Well, as you may or yeah, may not know, big back in the a day. lot of people have been dying lately in the day. of self-inflicted and or accidental causes. And you and I just might be next in line. Anything but a else? DVD game for right. 1998, yeah. I'm working with a Capricorn op named Wanda Peck. So who the hell are you? And what's your relationship to Wanda Peck? Well, my name's Murphy and I'm a P.I. <laughs> and I truly believe that Wanda and I are destined to be soulmates. I'm just hoping that someday she'll consent to bear my children. You know, I don't know if you're hooked up right, but Wanda wouldn't have let you come here if you weren't on our side. You really think you're safe here? It's as good a place as any. It doesn't really matter anyway. They're gonna find me sooner or later. That door closing. Actually, my own death is not uh, exactly high on my wish list of things I'd like to happen to me. But I'll tell you one thing. They know I'm not going to give up without a fight. So tell it, me something. It looks like John Boyd, but it's not him. But how does someone go from being Midget the John law and order party <laughs> candidate to the top of their things to kill list? 
A candidate is uh, sugar coating on a pill. The party sets an agenda and all I do is try to make it a little easier for the public to swallow. I still have Pandora Directive. What's under law and order to force fetus? What'd you say your CDs name was? And Murphy. DVD for Tex this. Murphy. Well, you gotta believe what I'm gonna tell you, Tex. Why not? I'm pretty gullible. Law and order has this plan. They're gonna put implants into everybody. It's gonna allow them to identify, track, and eventually control the whole population. They really believe they could get away with that? They know it. Listen, maybe you can answer something that's really bothering me. If law and order is so powerful, why are they going around killing everybody? Call. Greg Call. They're trying to kill anyone who has ties to him. He used to work for Gideon Enterprises. Well, how about I go talk to Frank Shimming? Shimming? Oh, he's squarely in the camp of law and order. Well, maybe he's behind this whole thing. I mean, Shimming could be... Shimmy could be the Overlord. You know about Overlord, too. <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, 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 yo. You okay? Looks like you got shot. Oh, now I'm getting shot too. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Rule number two. All right. Now I know what rule number two is. It was PI book. What? No, oh, there was a blow up doll scene. They forgot the blow up doll scene. <laughs> He, like, lures the guys into the building with, uh, John Voight's. With John Voight's sex doll. His, like, blow-up doll. Uh... Well, I had a... A few singed hairs, but uh, and in the, uh, I was okay. Future, they still smoke in restaurants. Little did I know, things were about to really heat up. Ooh, it sounds like Sylvia's about to make another appearance. That's a good guess. After I got out of Knott's Inferno, I decided to fly back to Linsky's warehouse, check up on my client. But she wasn't there. Have I told you this part of the story before? Oh, no, it's just that, well, I know how women work. <laughs> well... That makes one of us, anyway. So, she's not at the warehouse. I fly over to her apartment. She's not there, either. So I get in my speeder. I fly back to my office. I walk in the door. And she's waiting for you. Yeah. Probably wearing something very nice. To tell you the truth, I did not even notice. Oh, of course not. So then she says, Hello, handsome. Needless to say, I was very, very upset with her. Uh-oh. Oh! I thought we agreed that you would stay at the warehouse. I know. But I started worrying oh, man. something would happen to you. No wonder my frames are dropping. I'm very comfortable about being alone right now. Sylvia, this thing is dangerous. And I don't think you realize how dangerous it is. Well, tell me. I'm paying your tab, after all. 
I sure bring business into this. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? Am I not I hear just a client? Plugged in. There were plenty before me, and there will be plenty after me. <sighs> that's what I tell myself. What do you mean by that? the rules of a PI and the number one rule is don't fall for a client that wouldn't happen would it yeah, well I'm holding you personally responsible for making me even think twice about it I hmm. feel so guilty I'm shit sure. so tell me no my ethernet are there any rules about kissing a client that falls squarely under rule one. The rule that you're thinking twice about. So, break a rule. How many rules are there? 37, so far. So 36 out of 37, that's not so bad. And I won't tell a soul. Sounds like you were just about ready to go into a deep fryer. No, it's more like a quick sear, followed by a slow simmer. Listen, Sylvia. It has been an incredibly long day, and my resistance is just about zero. So if you will take ten paces back, I promise to quit smelling so good. I promise you that when this is over, look into the possibility. We got a deal. Okay. I'll be good. But I'll hold you to that promise. I've got a cot in the other room. You take that and I'll sleep here. Sweet dreams. That's not gonna be hard. As soon as I lose some weight, I think I'm gonna get rid of it. I don't think I need to be reminded anymore. At least that's true. <laughs> it's more realistic than Minecraft. No, I don't think I do. Good. Because I'm very selfish, you know? That's one of the things that really attracts me to you. Boy, that makes me happy to hear it. So now that you've described to me just about every temptation a man can stand, what happens next? Nothing happened. Nothing happened, okay? <laughs> Actually, I flew Sylvia back to the warehouse. Good. I thought you'd like that part. I went back to the office, and I had a call. Find the chess move? I did. It was in the design of Val Davis's pass card. Now, okay. Before I continue on with this, with freaking Ron Howard's brother, I'm going to connect this into my uh, laptop. It might reset, or the stream might reset, so don't uh, freak or uh, yeah, don't freak out. Hope we're, uh, hope we're still good. Alright. Should be alright now. I'm ready to meet with you. Just tell me when and where. It isn't safe yet. But I have another lead for you. Find out about Greg Call. Who's Greg Call? He was the lead programmer on the STG project. He knew about Overlord. Well, how do I find him? Greg Call. Overlord. Either one. Call is dead. Well, that's gonna make him easy to find. Call suspected that someone on the inside was selling out the STG project. For that reason, he relocated to a secret base of operation. If you find that, all your questions will be answered. Any hints on how I'm supposed to do that? 
The police were warned that Call might turn up dead. They may have found something that could lead you to where he was working. Oh, I gotta go. So Greg Call was the head of the SDG project. Yeah, but he was the dead head. So well. now you went back to see Detective Clements, right? Good guess. You seem to think I'm some sort of street informant. I'm gonna start charging you for these consultations. You know, you've been so very good to me. I think I'm gonna do you a favor. I know where Big Jim Slade is. If you're on the level, I'll trade you any information you want. Done. Slade's at the Big Surf Lodge, number six. It's off the Pacific Coast Highway, just north of Big Sur. How do you find out about these people? They died a few days ago. We would have chalked it up to natural causes. That was a an weird aneurysm, cut. maybe. Except we got an anonymous tip through 911 the day before he died. Tips just said that if he died, we should perform an autopsy. It only turned up one unusual thing. A small capsule planted under the skin. Inside huh. was a plastic tag with markings on it. We couldn't make heads or tails of it. Maybe you should give it a try. Was there anyone there? No, but as soon as I stepped inside, I did hear a voice. Oh, this, yeah. Stand by for system scan. Yeah, beer's legal in Twitch. I don't think uh like smoking or weed is legal on or legal on Twitch. How well was this anyway? I see plenty of people drink on Twitch. All right, and he got his implant out. Yeah. The overseer implant. I just saw that Discord, Hello. Columbo. Okay. I'm really not very good with surprises. Well, it isn't my mystery man. What's your name? Larry Hammond. I would have told you earlier, but uh, I have some serious trust issues going on. And Larry Hammond. With all that's happened... Uh, I've got the right to be a little paranoid. He had two heads in yeah, previous you games. Do. You haven't been using the code name Poison Pawn, have you? No. Why? That's not important. How'd you get here? I followed you. I wanted to make sure you came here alone. Well, I hope you were more careful about being followed than I was. Now, I have a very strong sense of self-preservation. I even brush my teeth carefully. Yeah, it shows. Why don't we just start at the top and see what you know? Tell me about Carl Linsky. Well, Linsky and I both worked on STG. But uh, I didn't know him back then. I recognized his picture in the paper from when he had his suicide. Well, that's helpful. How about STG? It was a really mysterious operation. When Greg brought me in to do some programming, I didn't know anybody on the design team. And we weren't encouraged to get to know each other either. No, it's not reversed. Once we got our instructions, uh, we went off to work in different places. None of us knew what each other was working on. 
So nope, it's not reversed. Who's in charge of this little circus? Greg had been there the longest. He was pretty much running the show. So is he this overlord I've come to hear so much about? Oh, no, there, there had to have been higher-ups. Uh, I knew Greg for a long time. We were in Mutant League together. Oh. Just so I understand something here, the reason you got in contact with me is because you wanted me to find Call's lab, right? Why? Well, early on in the program, Greg got really paranoid and relocated his base of operation. And no one knew where he was at. I didn't even see him until after I finished my work with STG. Now, a couple of weeks ago, after all the mysterious deaths, I decided to go underground to get a read on my life expectancy. Well, you see, I was underground and Greg found me, which didn't give me a great sense of well-being. <laughs> anyway, he, he said he needed my help. To do what? He wanted to find the pass cards we'd all been issued. You see, all eight of us received these cards at the beginning of the project. They were used to transmit data from wherever we were working to some sort of central computer. Now, the whereabouts of that computer, that, that was top secret. Well, what about the chess moves? Oh, I don't know anything about those. I think they were Greg's idea. He designed the cards. And you've got a card? Yeah. You take it. Just holding the thing next to my skin just gives me the hives. No, it's that polyester. Really? You told me if I came here, <laughs> that was going to be the answer to all of my questions. <laughs> I said that. No, I, I was just guessing. I, I've got something that might help. Now, Greg gave me this the last time I saw him. Now, he said, don't open it unless something happened to him. I think something happened to him. What are we supposed to do with it? What are we supposed to do with it? Uh-uh. It's your problem now. I told you everything I know. I gave you a pass card, and I gave you what Greg gave me. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go somewhere and try not to get killed. Hasta la pasta, baby. Hey, Larry. Thanks for the help. Anytime. To Larry, or whoever's watching this, yeah. I'll have to assume that my first plan has failed, and I'm probably dead. The purpose of this message is a warning, and afterwards my computer will reformat, so listen up. I've enjoyed a long friendship with Jay St. Gideon. We founded Gideon Enterprises together years ago, and I believe that he is a good man and has honorable intentions, regardless of how I may disagree with his philosophy. For years, he has worked on a program called Overlord, a worldwide surveillance system which would allow him ultimately to control key political figures, thereby speeding up the world peace process. This was all made possible about a year ago. That's the right of the game. Technology allowed us to create microscopic devices that once implanted inside someone would allow us to control the physiological reactions, the, the chemical reactions, make the person a slave to positive response. And in this way was born the STG project, sort of a Pavlovian remote control program. We recruited seven other scientists and put them on different phases of the project so none of them would know what the entire project was about. We gave them pass cards which would allow them to transmit data to a central overlord computer. I found out shortly thereafter that John Klaus, one of the scientists, was intending to sell out the project to the Law and Order Party. When I went to Gideon with my, my fears, he disregarded them. Either he knew something that I didn't, or he was simply too obsessed to listen to reason. Regardless, I took it upon myself to implement a fail-safe program into Overlord, which I called Stalemate. Now, in order to activate this stalemate failsafe program in Whoa. the Overlord system, all eight STG pass cards are required. In this series, it's post World War IV. To track down the other so seven there was this whole uh, mutation thing going on. Home once I'd learned that he'd commit a suicide, I guess sort of like Fallout. The card. 
The thought crossed my mind that since Carl Linsky and John Klaus but were I never friends, played Fallout, so possibly Linsky staged his own death and is working with Law and Order and John Klaus. But I can't substantiate that. At this point, I'm not sure who I can trust outside of Larry Hammond and Jason Gideon, though. I'm not sure how much Jason Gideon will listen to me at this point. Regardless, Gideon's program, Overlord, must be deactivated. If not by me, then by whoever's watching this message. I knew it! You knew what? Oh, Sylvia was behind the whole thing. Oh, it all fits together now. Of course, Linsky staged his own suicide. Okay, you got yourself an interesting theory now. Play with it. Um, uh, well, okay, Linsky, uh, worked at the clinic, right? right? And, um, well, there's a lot of patients there, and, you know, maybe one was in a coma or terminally ill, and, right. uh, Linsky finds one that is about his same size, maybe even looks like him, and I think that's where Linsky probably gets the idea. So, he dresses the patient in his clothes... He, you know, plants the wallet, the keys, and the, the suicide note on him. They, you know, dump the body in the bay, and uh, it's recovered, and who identifies it? Sylvia. He's the finished piece. Well, did I get it? Yeah. Did I figure it out? Maybe. Too bad it didn't give, her, so. uh, give everyone so, superpowers. Um, tell me the rest. Actually, I'm fascinated by your story. Why don't you tell me what you do next? If it were me, I would probably go to the Law & Order Party Headquarters. That's exactly where I went, because now I had Robert Knott's pass card. Pretty smart. You saw that on Mission Impossible, didn't you? Oh? Did they use that trick, too? Why, well, I had no <laughs> idea. Oh, yeah. Did you have any problems setting up the photo? Are you kidding? What do you think I am, an idiot? <laughs> I have a message for you. You'll probably think it's important. You can pick it up at my shop whenever you get the time to see me. Ciao for now. Yeah, I see how the cinematics can, like... Sheesh, Jorge, you're not still playing the same game. You're a little game, cutty. You? So, you got my Because there's a message. lot of, like, in-between yeah, in-game yeah. stuff that I'm not playing. I was playing. contacted on the internet by the poison pawn you asked me about. He sent an email for you. For me? It's over there on that computer. Thanks. There was no return address. That's all right. No, oh, it's come to this address. At the clock tower, right? This whole scene. Oh. Be a little prepared for some hammy acting. We've got an Estevez here coming up. Joe Estevez. Like. I forget how he's. Re well, like, he is related to, like, the Estevez Sheen. Emilio. Martin Sheen. Uh. Charlie Sheen. Oh, it's up, Chemical. Shame to carve such a beautiful mouth. Don't you think so, Mr. Murphy? It uh, was necessary, of course. You see, I couldn't have Delcinea warning off her knight Aaron from charging the windmill. I was wondering when you'd crawl out of that rat's nest. Contraire. Senor Guilty. Oh. Oh, this guy. It is you who are the rat. And you, my dear, the perfect piece of cheese. Who's the poison pawn? Is it you? Is it Sylvia here? Sylvia? The poison pawn? It was Miss Linsky's father who wrote the anonymous letter to Capricorn. 
We found copies of it while we were going through his papers. I really do After see the Jean Estevez. <clears throat> Unfortunate. In him. So why'd you have to trick me into coming here? Maybe not I the acting, you but... here to offer you a trade. You tell me what you know, and I let the little missy free. So, let's begin with the STG pass cards. Where are they? The best of my recollection there, somewhere on the Spanish High Plains with my trusted servant, Sancho. I've got him with me. <laughs> Excellent. Now, in 30 words or less, tell me everything you know about the STG project. Not too much. Well, this yeah, version was ripped from the DVD version. Control. Satellite tracking. When then there was that little experiment you pulled on me. <clears throat> well, I just said he's related to Martin Sheen and Estevez Emilio. You were supposed to be a good little detective and die, like Mr. Linsky. I mean, Linsky was your friend. I'd hate to see what you'd do to your enemies. Well, you're about to find out. Now, for the sake of Miss Linsky here, tell me what else you found out about. Well, there's someone running around with the name Overlord. He seems to be running things. You know? I think that's you. <laughs> Excellent! Excellent! Now, as a token of my appreciation... <laughs> One last kiss. Why'd you tell him he's never gonna let me go? <gasps> Sorry, Mr. Murphy, it looks like she's not in the mood. For once! <laughs> well, uh, let's just uh, <clears throat> move on to the uh, murder-suicide portion of the program, shall we? <clears throat> you said you'd let her go. We made a deal. Oh, Mr. Murphy, please. Don't compound your gullibility with your stupidity. I mean, she's more of a threat to me than you are. The mere fact that she's been intimate with several of my enemies, not to mention a handful of my allies, makes her a real threat. You're a liar! Don't listen to him, Tex. I, I've never had anything to do with Klaus or any of it. I swear it. Well, I didn't say you were involved. But I do realize you have the capacity for treachery. For all I know, you may be as innocent as you claim to be. I'm just not a risk taker. Oh, don't look so sad, Tex. At least you know that uh, you were the last, hmm? I mean, perhaps she even cared for you. As much as he's capable. Mr. Slade? Mr. Slade? I, uh, leave the necessary and pleasantries in your capable hands. My pleasure, Mr. Klaus. Stop wondering on my account. See, the way I got it figured, once I get all those pass cards, someone will pay top dollar to get them back. I was just taking out the middleman. If you take a personal check, I'd be happy to put in my bid. Well, I appreciate the offer, but I don't think you're in the right tax bracket. I was thinking more along the lines of, say, Jason Gideon. So, who wants to go first? I wonder if you'd consider yeah. granting me a last request. I suppose. As long as it's reasonable. Could 
I kissed Sylvia goodbye. At least that way, I could die a happy man. Well, I wouldn't want you to die unhappy. Go ahead. But don't do anything stupid. Yeah, there is a lot of if you make the wrong decision. I'm gonna find a way to get us out of this, okay? If you make the wrong ABC decision. There's like seven of them, too. In this scene. Then you have a really high chance of dying. Oh, that was very touching. Now let's get down to business. So who's first? You know, Slade, any little girl looks tough with a gun. Why don't you pretend you're a real man? Let you and I go mano a mano, huh? <laughs> I'll give you one thing, you've got guts. All right. I'll make an exception this one time. Among thieves, eh, Murphy? Why don't you just come out first? Make things easy on yourself. If you don't, I might just kill your girlfriend first. forever. I'll get you sooner or later. Soon is better for me. No! No, 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 no. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, okay, the bullet would Slade, still have, like, flown right through that. situation alive anyway. I do have a proposition. There's a for really it. strong tra uh, trash can shield. For some reason, you don't seem to understand. I don't need to make a deal with you. You want to blackmail Gideon, don't you? To do that, you're going to need all eight STG pass cards. I know where you can get seven of them. Eh, it's the future, I guess. Bloody drunk, or do you can think make I ultra am? strong material for trash cans now. Here's the STG pass card that Sonny stole from you. You let Sylvie and me go. I'll get you the other six. Oops. Tell me something. Why do they call you Big Jim Slade? Is that a roundhouse well, kick? That didn't. Beach will. Jesus. <laughs> this only that's the only movie knows. <laughs> Ow, that wasn't too fair. fun making these scenes. Okay. Did you overhear anything else? No. Alright, look. Take this. 
You keep your eye on him. Cops will be here in a bit, so he shouldn't be a problem. But there's something he's got that I need. Thanks. About that thing that Klaus said about me. Look, Sylvia, your business is your business. No, I understand, no. okay? Please, please listen. It's okay, really. The past is the past. It's important to me. I want to tell you there's been some things in my life that I'm not very proud of. I used to work for an agency. An escort agency. If I get out of this, I'm gonna bite your bloody leg off. If he says one more thing, I want you to just shoot him. I've known a lot of guys. But that was the past. It's behind me now. And it's all right, okay? I mean, really, it's all right with me. It really doesn't matter, so... Relax, okay? But I want it to matter to you. I've never had anything to do with Klaus or Law and Order or any of it. What the hell is this? <sighs> Card. Got it. Keep your eye on him. I'm okay? a new woman now. I'm not the person I used to be. Right. <laughs> oh, come on. You did not fall for that old line, did you? No. No way. Yes, you did, didn't you? Oh. <sighs> You married her. <laughs> okay, so how did uh, Sylvia justify this whole escort thing with you? Well, I guess she'd just gotten into modeling, was barely getting by. Oh, uh, a friend told her of a great way to make money. Yes. I guess that's the only reason she did it. Oh, likely story. Yeah, well, I guess I was pretty gullible back then. Anyway, while Slade and Klaus were waiting for me to show up, Sylvia overheard them talking. Apparently, Klaus had operated on Karl Linsky. When he removed the tumor, he replaced it with an implant that eventually drove Linsky insane. Slade just tracked him to make sure he committed suicide. I still think my theory's better. Well, I told you yours was a better story. But regardless, Klaus was using Linsky as a guinea pig for the Law and Order Party for what they intended to use Overlord for. Did Sylvia overhear anything else? Yeah, she did, as a matter of fact. Now, Klaus still wasn't sure where the Overlord main computer was, but he suspected it was at J. St. Gideon's mansion. And that's where you went next. Right. Oh, I would have loved to have seen that. I can just imagine you shimmying across on that pole. It's my formal dance training. Tex. You did it. Slade, when the cops came, he confessed to everything. The status of my daddy's death has been changed from suicide to homicide, and I got the money. That's great, uh, Sylvia. That's great. <laughs> I'm not done with the case yet. <laughs> what do you mean you're not done? There's still something I've got to do. Uh, why? I, I, we're rich. You can retire. This isn't about money. <sighs> Well, what in the world else could it be about? Call it a moral obligation. What about your immoral obligation? Gideon's project's out of control. I mean, a lot of people have died. Why don't Somebody's got to do something about it, and I'm in the best position to do that. Why don't you just stay out of it? You've got plenty of things to take care of now, including me. If our future's worth having, it's worth waiting for. Everything around here to make us completely happy. How dare you want to throw it away? What are you trying to prove, huh? That you're brave and strong? Well, I've already seen that. What you're talking about is stupid. Obviously don't understand me very well. I got into this business to help people, and I'm not just going to sit around and watch this thing happen. I mean, how would I feel about myself? You know what? You go play Boy Scout. I don't care. Sylvia, I want us to be together, but you can't change me. You know what? You do what you have to do. Just don't expect me to bring flowers to your funeral. I left for Alcatraz right after Sylvia stormed out of my office. Probably should have gotten right. a good night's sleep first, but I was pretty wound up. Mm, poor baby. 
Yeah, well, it turns out it didn't matter. As soon as I landed on Alcatraz and stepped out of my speeder, something zapped me and I blacked out. Must have been one of those security droids. When I came yeah, to, I was in a end. locked jail cell in one of the old prison sections. This is where the game often crashes for some people. And, like, can't resume through the game. Too bad it's like the final part. But yeah, Jason Gideon, the uh, Michael York cripple we saw earlier. Uh, he has like this sort of secret base under Alcatraz. Oh man. Now we're going into VR Troopers mode. Exit this program immediately, Mr. Murphy. Sorry, Mr. Gideon, I can't do that. You don't understand what you're doing. I am not the enemy. I know, but Overlord is. Then you do not understand its purpose. I think I do. Do you know how close Law and Order came to overtaking your system? <laughs> A calculated risk, my friend. It is the only solution. Well, a lot of innocent people have been killed. I'm just trying to make sure there are no more victims. It is better that some die, rather than allow the entire planet to degenerate into total chaos. No one's got the right to play God. Well, earlier he said that there are it's no heroes in some movie, only but villains with varying it's degrees. Done every day, and moreover, by people who aspire to nothing more than avarice and domination. What do you imagine stopping me will accomplish? But what do you think you'll accomplish? Overlord is the hope, Mr. Murphy. Oh, with it. I can influence events in the global political arena for good. Good for you, maybe. Good for all those who respect mercy and justice. You created just a little bit of a monster here, Mr. Gideon. It wouldn't be the first time you lost control of your creation. The Law and Order Party was going to use it for its own purposes. Other groups are going to try, and eventually one of them's going to succeed. This little nightmare of yours has got to be destroyed. <laughs> oh, I pity your blindness. And regret that you cannot be reasoned with. Let the match begin. not, but, um, you have the first move. Yeah, well, that's good. And then you get to play a chess game, which we don't get to see, and then satellite blows up. <laughs> you win! Yay!
Checkmate, I, Mr. Gideon. But I do love this scene. Yeah, the final battle in this game is is a chess game. Case is finished. I've been saving this to celebrate my success. I suppose I should drink to yours. I shan't be needing it anymore. Find a penny, pick it up. All the day you'll have good luck. <laughs> that was odd cutting. a list of games that you can't play on Twitch. Keep talking. <laughs> well, how about a romantic night in the Caribbean or sun-filled days on the beaches of Rio? How about skiing in the Alps? And beer, yeah, you, you can ski. drink it. You just can't, you know, drink I'll it you to excessive ski. levels of not, Among other you know, things. You can't inflict harm upon yourself. I'm really. kind of a white picket fence kids dog oh. kind of guy. We'll talk about it's that. It's like later. a lot of the porn games. Right uh, now we have the whole world to explore. The AO versions you know, of Sonya, oh, Grand Theft Auto Fod or uh, San Andreas. To be. I think we need to get an investment counselor. <clears throat> well, 
director's cut of uh, Fahrenheit and Indigo Prophecy. I've already spent $150,000. But that reminds me, I got a little something for you. Hold on. Do this. This is in celebration of solving your first case. Wow. It's a hat. <laughs> All great detectives wear hats. I thought you should have a fedora. I hope you didn't pay too much for it. <laughs> I paid way too much for it. was supposed to have been owned by Humphrey Bogart. I know how much you like him. Here, help me try it on. Oh, this hat? No. <laughs> But indoors, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, doll. Mm -hmm. Why not? It's my bedroom. I get I get to wear whatever the fuck I want. But not nothing on stream. <laughs> Gideon was probably right. No, he wasn't. I will not wear my you birthday were. suit on my birthday suit. Hey, this is er, not a on my perfect birthday world. On stream. <laughs> no one expects it to be. But the most important thing is our freedom. The freedom to make choices for ourselves. And yes, every now and again, maybe the freedom to make an occasional mistake. You are much too critical of yourself. <sighs> it's just that... I guess I'm not used to hanging my heart out on my sleeve. I feel like I'm bleeding all over you. Hey, whose idea was it? It was mine, wasn't it, to have this talk? And you know what? I appreciate how honest and forthright you've been. Hell, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sitting here with the world's most wonderful woman, and I haven't been able to make a commitment to you. No, I saved my commitment for women like Sylvia, who caused me nothing but grief. Sonny and Gideon, they were right, because I didn't know anything about life. And I was just getting set up for a big fall, I can tell you that right now. Didn't even take very long with Sylvia. I mean, Sylvia was the only woman that I ever trusted enough with my heart. And not only did she not want it, she punched a hole in it with her high heel as she walked out the door. I am so sorry that you've had to go through all this. I know how hard this has been for you to to open up and to talk to me. You okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling you know about life. vulnerable <laughs> and I feel stark naked. But for some strange reason, I actually feel better. Go figure. Good. <laughs> because I know how hard it is for you manly men uh, to Morris. open up to us women. Uh, no. But sometimes no. It, it helps to share the pain. And who knows, maybe it'll get rid of all those nightmares you were telling me about. I'm turning 30. Yeah, that'd be nice. And it's like at this, I feel old at the same time I still feel 18. I know. Right now, we're... Just very good friends who happen to be attracted to each other. Extremely attracted to each other. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the only way is 
question a few minutes ago about being very attractive? 16 minutes of video? I think the wording was uh, very, oh, wow. very attractive. Well, nine minutes of video. I have something better for you to do with your mouth. And most of this is credits, so... And what kind of final battle was it? Uh, you had to, like, uh, do a, a certain amount of chess moves. Damn. <laughs> oh, no! What? It's me. It's me. It's Man. my breath. No, it has nothing to do with I you. I shouldn't have had the garlic sauce. Look, look. Our speeder. It has been stolen. Somebody has stolen our car. Oh. I can't believe this. Man, I knew it. It was just too good to be true. The best moment of my life, followed by the world's worst. I mean, here I am, my speed are stolen out here. I'm sitting on a great... Ah! It's... Oh. I don't know. Look, it's or I, okay. I kind of I don't, don't, don't entirely remember, Please just because we'll I've played chess before, so... Insurance? Oh, well, I no. did have insurance, but the fact of the matter it's was probably I was good never to know using how it, to play so chess. The policy okay, so maybe the police can help you track it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure the police are going to drop everything for Murphy's missing speeder. Oi, you guys saving that spot or what? Hell no, if you want it, take it. You okay? You know, actually, our, our speeder was just stolen. Mama. Yeah. Hey, what? Uh, would you guys like a lift to the cop shop? No, we'll walk. He's really just trying to do us a favor. Chelsea, I'm getting a really bad feeling about this. It's like some sort of deja vu or something. Oh, come on. I think you're just upset over, over losing the speeder. Look, don't be stubborn right now. You know what? We would really appreciate it. Would you? Hop in. Thank you very much. Glad to help. Oh, look. His head is even uglier than yours. Hey. What's wrong with my hat? It's a shame to lose such a beaut parking spot. Yeah, well, thanks for reminding me. Sorry about that. Pity about the speeder. We'll be okay. Hey, thank you very much again for the ride. Pleasure. Glad to help. Exhibit. Fabergé. Exhibit. He's having a very bad day. That true, Tex? Oh, no. Everything's just going peachy. Well, things could get worse, though. They left us right there for 15 years. <laughs> and then they did a Kickstarter. And then they made Tesla Effect. Which I will be playing... In a few minutes. Just jump out of the car. Just high up there. You don't get it? Oh, there was a, you know, that little rotating banner thing, that floating rotating banner. It was for a, like a Fabergé museum. A Fabergé egg museum. She just said like, don't, one of the, don't miss one of the world's most famous exhibits. <laughs> Uh, this is the remake. Overseer is a remake of the first game. Hold on. Can't you see the truth is there when you look in my eyes? I love you, Richie Havens, but 
That's no yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, I'm done a bit. Um, yeah, Overseer is a remake of the first game, and so is the Poison Pawn coming out. Yeah, Poison Pawn is coming out this year, and that's pretty much a remake of this game. So it's kind of weird they they like remade the same game twice. But I can't wait for it. I loved Overseer. I played the crap out of this game just because uh, it was the one Murphy I could play at the time. But yeah, they. For 15 years, uh, Microsoft didn't want to pick them up because, you know, adventure games were dying. And they finally, like, got the rights back from Microsoft. And they did the Kickstarter and they made Tesla Effect. And I backed the Kickstarter, so... in 10 years. Directive. Yeah, Overseer was 1998. And Tesla Effect was 2014, so yeah, about... It took a while. And yeah, they did radio theater. Wait, cinema. Oh, it just stops right there. Okay, cool. All right. Well, before I start Tesla Effect, I do need to go to the bathroom and I need to sort of set up real quick. I need to change my title. Title has been updated. Yay! Yeah, this uh, right here that we just watched is the remake of... Uh, the 1991 game, yeah. Coming up is the 2014 game. And, yep, I believe I'm somewhat ready to go. Yep. Oh, whoa. There we go. Oops, I'm a little high up. Oh, it's not letting me uh, do that. Uh, oh, because my webcam is locked. I didn't want my webcam locked. I didn't want that layer locked. Here we are. We're back. We're back. 
I will have fun in the bathroom. Thank you very much. I'll be right back, guys. And, uh, yeah, we'll start uh, Tesla Effect right afterwards. I'll be right back.